Hello and welcome to Sketching Out a Career in Art Therapy. I'm Dr. Deborah Elkis Abahoff, Associate Professor in the Creative Art Therapy Program here at Hofstra University. Today I'm going to introduce you to the profession of art therapy, look at how art therapists approach processing artwork, and tell you a little about the Creative Art Therapy Program here at Hofstra University. So, who are art therapists? According to the American Art Therapy Association, the national professional organization and organization that approves art therapy education programs, art therapists are skilled in the application of a variety of art modalities. This includes drawing, painting, sculpture, photography, cinematography, or any other visual media that um, you create uh, for assessment and treatment purposes. The American Art Therapy Association continues to say that art therapists are trained to work with people of all ages and impairments in a variety of settings such as hospitals, rehabilitation centers, medical facilities, psychiatric, educational, assisted living facilities, as well as private practice. So who is helped by art therapy? Art therapy is used with so many populations, from children, adolescents, adults, older adults, groups, families, veterans. Veterans are um, a very growing area as our men and women come back and have experienced trauma. And people with chronic health issues to assess the treat and treat a variety of issues, such as anxiety, depression, and other emotional problems substance abuse and addictions, family and relationship issues, abuse and domestic violence, social and emotional difficulties related to disability and or illness, trauma and loss, physical, cognitive and neurological problems, and psychosocial difficulties related to medical illnesses. So you can see there is an extremely broad spectrum of people we work with and issues that we address. Art therapy can be approached in a variety of ways, from artist therapy within an open studio, the belief being that simply making art and creating art is, and of itself, healing, to art psychotherapy, where the visual creation or image is used as part of the psychotherapeutic process and is then verbally processed. Art therapists use the same skills and support the client as, psych as psychologists and counselors, these include everything from psychodynamic, uh, developmental, Jungian, family systems, and cognitive behavioral, just to name a few theoretical approaches. What makes art therapy different, though, is that the artwork becomes a tangible item that can be included in the therapeutic process. In verbal therapy, people can filter out what they want to say, and words could be lost. If I say, how are you today? You can choose what words to use. Or how is that experience? Sometimes you can't find the words to link to that experience. Whereas with the visual communication, we are unable to filter out what we present in the visual form, and therefore the created image taps into things that might not be expressed in the verbal therapy session. To, together, the client and therapist um, go on a journey to develop, um, to help the client develop their own visual dictionary through form, color, placement, size, line pressure, just to name a few areas that we look to review, explore. So we're going to look at some artwork here. Um, this is artwork done by Lewis Wayne. He is a very famous artist in, in the UK. He was a very famous artist in the UK. He specialized in drawing animals and country scenes. He experienced a late break schizophrenia, and this is some artwork that is an indication of his progression through his mental illness. If we start in the first frame, we can see how he portrayed his cats. But if we go to the second uh, slide or frame, we start to see an indication of schizophrenia. The cats start to become more abstract and fragmented. The eyes in the second frame 
are indicative of what might be represented in the artwork when clients are having visual hallucinations. The third frame shows the increasing energy and overproduction that so many people with schizophrenia experience. Those with schizophrenia aren't able to filter out things that are around them. For example, noises such as the heating vent, a squeak of the chair, moving of the paper could have the same weight as the person they're trying to listen to. The brain makes all attempts to make sense of the environment, but also becomes overwhelmed by the overproduction and static around them. This is presented very well in that third slide. As you continue, you can see the cat form fragmenting and becoming more obscure and almost kaleidoscope looking, which is a good indication of the fragmented thinking so many with schizophrenia experience. However, if you look carefully, you can still see the form of the cat even in that last frame. This artwork here gives a different feeling. The darker, more muted colors, the natural line of your, that your eye follows is a downward motion towards the bottom of the page. There's a feeling of heaviness, sadness, low energy. This is indicative of the representation of someone experiencing depression. As you can see, it has a very different feel from the Lewis Wayne cats. Looking at this artwork, how do you feel? Put yourself at the end of the branch in the picture on the left. Is it comfortable? What feelings do you have? Many times you can get an idea of the client's experience by Im imagining yourself in the image. There's a lot of movement and action through color, form, and placement. And in this case, we're looking at the representation of anxiety. Here we have some examples of artwork related to children who experience trauma. On the left, the attack of the World Trade Centers on September 11th. You can see the energy and the pressure that was used to draw the fire or the scribbles that are there. There are people jumping out of the building and there is no place that is safe. Once again, put yourself in the picture. How does it feel? Is there a place that you would stand or be? Is it comfortable? On the right is a drawing from Hurricane Katrina. Over 1,800 people died during Hurricane Katrina. And you can see the vulnerability that this artist felt. There were people drawn under the water, and those that are on top of the water are not protected. Even though the house looks somewhat safe or solid, the people are standing outside or in a glass area without much protection. That huge stop sign tells a lot about the artist and how the artist might feel. When experiencing an uncontrollable situation, a lot of times we all have this reaction to just yell, stop, make it stop. And the artist here makes a very big statement of saying that. When art therapists um, work with families and relationships, we look at how people are represented, and even what or who is missing. So if we look at these three pictures, and we take the one on the top left, for instance, we see three girls, all wearing crowns with the large word love. What else do we notice? How about that smudge? Was that supposed to be another person or item that was removed from the drawing? The girl on the left looks like she's also starting to be smudged out. If they are moving forward, and if we take the orientation from right to left, as we read, we, go, we think of left being the past and right being the future, there's a hill that is there that they have to overcome as they move forward. Is there an obstacle in the way or a situation that they have to conquer? The artwork on the right shows a boy with a mother and father figure. Notice the connection the boy has with the mother. They're standing next to each other, they're holding hands, whereas the father figure is drawn much larger. 
not connected to the others, and is standing with a barrier between the boy and the mother, if you see right on the floor between them. And we can see the ground line is sloping downward. Seems like if you go in the same orientation from past to future, it seems like a slippery slope or something that is falling, falling downward. What about the spiked forms next to the father's feet? If you were in this drawing, where would you put yourself? Would you be comfortable? How about standing in the father figure spot? These are all items that would lead to opening up the processing with the client. So some of the things that we have to remember when we're involved in art therapy is art is a powerful tool. I find that what I can do in three months of verbal therapy, I can usually do in three weeks with art therapy. It always amaze me, amazes me. Um, the art, however, must be used and ca with careful skill. Um, it requires understanding of art, media and its application, and of course the population. How do, to approach different populations to meet their needs? If we're using a media such as watercolor, when is it appropriate or not appropriate to use with different populations, such as anxiety, schizophrenia, depression, um, we need to know the, how, how to approach this and what we can challenge our clients to do in a safe manner. And it's very important to meet the client where they need to be. The client needs to feel safe, be able to open up, and we need to know when they're ready. They kind of tell us when they're ready to make the move going forward. So I always say, um, don't go into someone else's head on invited. And if you are invited, take off your shoes and tread lightly because it's truly an honor to be invited and be there. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hofstra University and our art therapy program. Hofstra University is located on Long Island um, in New York. The Creative Art Therapy Program is fully approved by the American Art Therapy Association and is a licensed eligible program through New York State for the Licensure in Creative Arts Therapy, or LCAT. We have a very rigorous program that exceeds the minimum requirements of both the American Art Therapy Association and New York State. What makes Hofstra's program so strong is that since art therapy as a profession is so vast, we expose our students to all different approaches and help to guide the students to find their own identity as an art therapist. We have a large variety of field placements that range in populations from children with autism in a school setting to child and adolescent inpatient psychiatric facilities, outpatient day programs, medical, geriatric, museums, and that's just to name a few. We work with each student and find the best placement based on the student's goals and interests. So what we don't do, what we do is we make sure we understand what your interest is. We, you sit down with our internship and placement coordinator and we find a placement that works for where you want to go um, as opposed to assigning and saying this is where you will be next semester. Our faculty come from all different areas of art therapy as well. From those that work in a very structured psychotherapeutic environment, as we saw in the earlier slide, where they're sitting with the client, they're creating the artwork, and they're processing it, to those that have a more open studio setup, where clients and patients come in, and they uh, set up an easel or artwork, and they're just there, and they create. And the art therapist is there to help support. Even theoretical pro approaches vary, from Jungian to cognitive behavioral, which really allows the students to get all the information and have the ability to find a direction that best fits them as an art therapist. Our program is very cohesive. The faculty and students take the journey together. I always say that faculty know the students so well that not only do we know you by name, not number, but we usually know what's going on with each student. We follow our students' progress very closely. 
when a student comes to our offices to ask a question, we already have an idea of what they're going to ask. Of course, the campus. There's a lot to do on campus, lots of clubs, lots of activities. Um, but there's also a lot to do in the surrounding area. Hofstra is located 40 minutes by train directly into Midtown Manhattan, where you can have access to museums, entertainment, restaurants, and everything Manhattan has to offer. We are also only 15 minutes from world famous beaches and great shopping. So after studying so hard, we have time to uh, relax and enjoy. Okay, so um, that's a little bit about our therapy and our program. And I'm open to answering any questions that might be of interest. Okay, so the first question is, do I have to be a fine artist to be an art therapist? Absolutely not. We get students who come with a psychology major um, or an, a fine arts major, and they come together. So our psychology majors usually have a minor in fine arts and take those 18 credits, but they don't consider themselves fine artists. In order to be an art therapist, you have to understand the different media how to work with paint and clay and crayons and pencils and understand what art is about. Um, but you don't have to be an artist yourself. And then how to apply the media to the different populations. Okay, I have another question. Are there specific art therapy approaches mainly used with children versus adults? Well, it really depends more on the population. With, with either population, depending on if you have a child, let's say, with a physical um, disability or an adult with a physical disability, you might be working with adaptive tools, um, tactile stimulation, things like that. Adults, we do tend to have more insight-oriented therapy than with children, just because of their maturity level. But it does really more, depend more on the population than the age group. Does one need to have a master's degree before finding employment? Um, as an art therapist, yes. Art therapy is a master's level degree. And in order to be fully recognized as an art therapist, you need to have a master's degree. And then afterwards, uh, we strive to get the registered art therapy uh, sort of, uh, registration, a board certification, and state licensing. But that comes after your master's. But in order to enter the field as an art therapist, uh, you do need to have a master's degree. You mentioned that art therapy can have a quicker effect on the client than verbal therapy. Why is this so? With the art therapy, um, we have this tangible drawing or piece of art that we can refer to. So if I'm in a counseling session and I say something, and the therapist three weeks down the line wants to say something about it, they would maybe pull out their notes and say, three weeks ago you mentioned da-da-da-da-da, and maybe I don't remember that, or maybe it doesn't fit into what I'm saying now, or maybe I just deny saying it, or I didn't say it in that way. But when you have a piece of artwork, it's tangible. We can take it out and we can say, you know, you place the sun on this side. Um, do you still feel it's the same way? You know, we can talk about what is, what is happening. We can go uh, week to week and look at the artwork and the progression in a tangible visual way. This, the best part about the visual representation is that it doesn't have filters. So anything that's down on paper is part of ourse ourselves, our clients, and therefore there's, there's no hiding. I didn't tell my therapist this this week. There's indication in the art that the therapist could pick up on and be able to start the questioning in that area. So it does move along the therapy session quite quickly. And any other questions? Another question. Okay. Um, besides being in class together, what other opportunities exist for students 
to network with their peers and professionals in the field. Wow. <laughs> this, is, this is great. We have a very, very active program. Just, just this week, we had a gallery tour. We have a, a Creative Art Therapy gallery, and we had a tour, and we had artwork that uh, was presented from two different facilities, and those uh, members from those facilities came and talked about it. It was open. It was open to the community, so we get our students, our supervisors, other professional art therapists. Next week, we have our annual art therapy conference, which um, also includes everybody uh, from uh, people who are interested in art therapy to supervisors, art therapists. We have uh, prominent art therapists coming to speak, lots of workshops so people can get involved. But besides that, we also have, we have other events also in that area, but we also have the Creative Art Therapy Club at Hofstra, which is our student-run organization. And we have a welcoming um, event. We have an art show, where community art show, where people from the community come in and they can present their artwork. Uh, we have uh, uh, holiday shows. We have a guest speaker coming in, a uh, professional organization. Uh, we have the New York Art Therapy Association, which is our professional organization locally. And of course, we have the American Art Therapy Association. And getting together with different people, the New York Art Therapy Association has a lot of different events throughout the year that, as students, members, you can go to for free, which is very nice. Do you, okay, now another question. Do you feel the market for art therapy will be growing in the next five years? This is someone in Albany, and they don't see positions. Um, I actually get this question a lot, and I will tell you that art therapy had been really affected by the recession, and now with the focus on mental, on, on health reform and mental health, Things have turned around. I do feel it's growing. I think it's it's becoming a broad field. People people are starting to talk about it and know what it is, and it really it really has a great impact in the mental health uh, area. So it is growing. As I said earlier, veteran administration. I've been getting calls from the veterans administration to talk about uh, working with the military, as have so many other um, art therapists in the profession. So. There's lots of room for growth. How many students are currently in the program? Our program runs about 50 to 60 uh, students, and that is includes our full-time students, which usually is a class around 22, and then we have part-time students. We do have an option to go part-time uh, and also full-time, obviously. So students come in the group of 22 full-time, sometimes they'll decide to go to, to part-time, but for the most part it's a group of 22 going through the program together, and then our part-time students who have the flexibility to go through the program over um, a longer period of time. Any other? Okay. What would my role as an intern be in the field? Hofstra University sets up our field site placements in a, in a very unique way. In the first year, the first two semesters, we have practicum classes which include two 50-hour placements. So in one semester, you'll do 50 hours. We do like to do it in um, a population of children. And the next one would be the other population, would, which would be adults. And that is more of an observation participant. You work side by side with an art therapist for those 50 hours, and you become involved to the degree that is appropriate for that setting. So I have students who, by the end of that first semester, are with co-leading groups with their supervisor. The second year, we have two 300-hour internships, and this is where the art therapist works with the with the art therapist works with the student. I mean, not with the student, more independently. <laughs> um, the student works more independently 
with the um, within the facility that they're assigned with supervision from an art therapist. So you might be working at an inpatient psychiatric hospital and you'd start off working more side by side and getting the feel of the hospital and then eventually you, you would be running your own groups, working with your own patients and maybe even writing notes being co-signed from the art therapist supervisor. Okay, I think that is about time and um, I hope that if you have any other questions you contact either myself or our director and I look forward to hearing from you.